Good afternoon, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Imagine if my voice really sounded like that. I wouldn't want to be British or Irish or Scottish, whatever the accent was supposed to be. But, uh, it would be pretty cool to have an accent, but I don't. So, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Chris Luck, and today I'm going to give you five adventures that you need to experience in Alaska. Now these adventures are based on my personal experience. I do have a bucket list video coming soon, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and I will get that up. Alright, so Alaska, I moved here a couple years ago and it was the greatest thing I ever did. I used to live in New Jersey and I knew from the start, it, New Jersey was just not for me. I wasn't a beach person, uh, I just wasn't a city person, you know. I, I live in remote Kodiak, Alaska. Well, technically, it's remote because it's not on the highway system. It's not on the road system. But it's a pretty good-sized uh, town in Kodiak. So it's not like I live in one of the villages or anything. With that being said, let's kick this off with number one. Last year, in June, I made a video of my trip to Katmai National Park. And it was... It was probably my favorite thing I ever did. Um, it, it's just so amazing. So I recommend you get a professional bear guide to Katmai National Park. You don't have to go to Brooks Falls where you see the bears fishing in the falls there. Um, that's kind of, they call it the Disneyland of bear viewing because you're very limited to what you can do there. Where if you get a bear guide and you're out in open Katmai, like Hallow Bay or Geographic Harbor, um, man, you are going to see some amazing wildlife. Absolutely amazing. About May to June, July is um, bears grazing. So you'll probably be in Hallow Bay. Uh, they do have a couple other places depending on the weather that they go to. And if you want to see bears fishing, which is really cool, I plan on going this year with my buddy Scott Stone. He is a bear guide. So be sure to follow him on Instagram, Scott Stone Images. He was actually in my last vlog when I had the um, uh, R5. So he's a professional bear guide. I recommend you contacting him because he will give you an experience that you'll never, ever, ever forget. It's so worth it. Like uh, July, more like August and September is good fishing season for the bears. So you'll probably end up in Geographic Harbor. Highly recommend that for my number one adventure that you need to experience. Alright, so number two, the easiest and most affordable, well it can add up, the easiest thing that you can do when you're in Alaska is road trips. Oh my god, you will see some amazing amazing landscapes and wildlife and just have an awesome time just driving around this beautiful state. I, I've pretty much gone everywhere you can go on the road. I haven't gone up to Purdue Bay. That's as far that I haven't gone. Um, I've done pretty much everything else and let me just tell you, no matter where you go, you'll see some amazing things. No matter what the weather is, you'll see some amazing things, especially if you could see Denali when you're just driving through Talkeetna or something, uh, it's so gorgeous. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what the heck is that? You see all like these mountains and they're all like, they're pretty far away and you're like, okay, they, I mean, they're, they're nice mountains. Then all of a sudden you just see this huge mountain just peaking. It's, it's beautiful. So for road trips, I highly recommend you go to anywhere. Seriously, anywhere. Whittier, Seward, Homer, Kenai Peninsula, that's all kind of on the Kenai Peninsula there. Um, Talkeetna, Healy, uh, just to Denali National Park. If you go to Fairbanks or Delta, do the whole circle. Go to Glen Allen. Go to Kennecott McCarthy. Oh, that was beautiful. I loved it. The drive was kind of rough. I will say the drive was kind of rough going out there if you're not used to those back roads. It's about 60 miles of unpaved road, but oh my God, it was so worth it. And plus we went at dusk, so we were kind of tired and it started to get a little frustrating, but we saw so many owls and bunnies. Oh, it was so cool. It was so cool. Highly recommend that. And I think the most beautiful drive that you can do is driving from Anchorage to Valdez. 
There is just so much you see along the way. It's just unreal. And if you look on Google Maps, like, well, there's only so many roads you can go on. So I highly recommend you do all of the road system. If you don't have enough time, you need to come back and you do it again. One road trip that I absolutely loved and my wife Angelica didn't really care for it because it's a long and uh, it's a long and dangerous road. It's actually known as the most dangerous highway in America, the Dalton Highway, which goes up to Purdue Bay. But we stopped and we went to Coldfoot and it was just so beautiful there. You're above the Arctic Circle, and if you go a little further north, you go to Wiseman, and there's cabins, and if you go in the fall, you can see the northern lights. It is truly an amazing experience. Okay, moving on to number three. Number three adventure that you need to do is photography and hiking. Yes. Do they go hand in hand? Uh, Absolutely. Have you ever gone on a hike and not taken a photo of beautiful nature that was around you? Whether it was just a little creek or a river or anything. Um, if you go hiking, you take a photo. I don't care who you are. You'll do it. Some great beginner hikes in Alaska that you can do and that most people would be able to do. Exit Glacier in Seward. That's a very popular one. Very beautiful there. The Butt. I get, maybe it's called a Butte. I don't know. I call it the Butt and Palmer. That is a really gorgeous view. Eagle River, Mount Baldy. It is gorgeous there. And that's where I go for my Northern Lights. I'll get to that in a little bit. And also in Anchorage, if you don't want to drive far around, go to Anchorage's Flat Top Mountain. It is gorgeous there. You, Especially on a good day when you can see the fog below covering the city and over top you see the mountains overhead. It is so gorgeous, guys. If you are a super advanced hiker, which I'm not and I'm ne I never will be, uh, if you want to do some crazy mountains, obviously there's Denali. Good luck with that. Another one that's kind of underrated, but I think it's the most photogenic mountain in Alaska is Mount Drum. You can hike that. They do have adventures or backpacking hikes that take, fly you out there to hike Mount Drum. Pioneer Peak in Palmer it is absolutely gorgeous. There's Crow Pass, which is also very beautiful. Never hiked that one, but the pictures that I've seen are amazing. And also there is Eagle Peak, which is really, really pretty. If you are an advanced hiker and you've never hiked in Alaska, you need to get your butt up here right now and you have to do it because it's truly, truly an experience that will change your world forever. All right, number four. Number four is a glacier excursion. You can go from Valdez, Whittier, and Seward. They all have them and they are really, really cool. It's a cool family event that you guys can do and uh, you might be able to see some glaciers calving, which would be super duper amazing to see. I only went on one glacier excursion and I didn't see a glacier calving, but I, we saw some amazing things from wildlife such as puffins and eagles and whales and sea lions and sea otters and everything. Um, oh my god, it was just so beautiful. Alright guys, and number five. The number five is also the number one reason that brought me to Alaska, and that's the Northern Lights. And who does not want to see them? Have you ever said, have you ever said someone, oh, I saw the Northern Lights and they said, oh, that's cool. I never wish I saw those. Now, nah, usually they say, oh, I wish I saw them or I've seen them before. They're so beautiful. The Northern Lights are just, that's my life. That is just what changed my world forever. So in Alaska, we have a midnight sun, which you've heard of. So due to the midnight sun, you can't really see the Northern Lights between April, late April and early to mid August. So between them, you can't really see them. Best time I think to personally go is early September because you're getting a little bit of nighttime and it's not super cold yet. The other day, people in Fairbanks were seeing the Northern Lights, negative 32 degrees. Who the heck wants to do that? So August is, you're not getting much nighttime, but that's when they start to come. September's really, really good. September, and maybe October, the Fairbanks starts to get their first snow. If the Northern Lights are your number one goal to see in Alaska, 
you have to go to Fairbanks and spend 10 days there because they're not guaranteed to come out every night. It just doesn't happen. Hey, Snipe. Hey, Nagoe. Hi. Hi. Look, say hi to the camera. All right, you're going to lay down. Go ahead, lay down. So, yeah, if Aurora is your only goal, you need to just spend a week to 10 days in Fairbanks, if not more. Um, we are coming out of a solar minimum. So, I would say between 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, they are the best years that you're going to see because that's going to be the solar maximum. We're starting to come out, so I'm hoping this fall be, is really good, and then next year I'm hoping it's really good, and I just hope it gets even better, because I moved here in a solar minimum, and I still have seen some northern lights that have just made me want to move here, and that's what got me into photography, and that's what's brought me in front of YouTube today. If you are up for uh, adventure and hoping you see the northern lights, I definitely recommend you just fly into Anchorage and you drive around, and you pay attention to spaceweather.com. That's the number one website to see the Northern Lights. Um, it's not going to make you see them, but it gives very accurate information on when the Northern Lights are coming. So what you have to do is once you're in fair or once you're in Anchorage, you just pay attention to that website and you just drive around and find some find some clear skies because that is all you need to see them is some clear skies. Well. You also need a good Aurora storm as well. But the further north you go, so if you're between Fairbanks and Coldfoot, um, you don't really need that whole lot. You just need some clear skies and a little bit of luck to see them, and it's so amazing. Before I moved here, the first time I visited, I was in x-ray school on my spring break. I came here by myself. I had $800 to my name, and that's how much it cost to get here, including a little bit of food that I'd just be able to afford. And I was here for about a week, and it was like eight days, and uh, I didn't see them. I was I was a little disappointed, but the beauty that I saw in Alaska was was just so so amazing, and it's just something you have to see for yourself. Videos and pictures don't do it justice. I promise you that videos and pictures do not do it justice. But when I was leaving. I saw an article that you can see the northern lights on the plane. So you know what I did? I changed my seat to the pilot side, the left side of the airplane. That's the side you want to be on if you're leaving Alaska. If you're coming into Alaska, you want to be on the right side. When I got in the plane and the pilot announced for departure, it was an overnight flight, the pilot said, we have to fly a little further north to avoid some wind streams or whatever it was, turbulence. And uh, I, I said to myself, there's, there's no way this is, this is gonna come true. There's no way I'm gonna see them. And I did, and it was just amazing. Absolutely amazing. But anyway, so if you're in Anchorage, some great spots that you can see the Northern Lights from are the Flat Top Mountain, Drive to Eagle River to Mount Baldy, and if you want to drive a little further, a gorgeous place is Talkeetna. You can see Denali with the northern lights behind it, and man, how could you not want to see that? I'm going back in March to the mainland. We're spending a couple nights in Talkeetna, and I'm really hoping to see the northern lights from the overlook there. All right, guys. I am not going to bore you any longer with this video. I hope you did find it exciting though. And I hope that you book your trip and you see everything you want to see and more. And if you don't see half of the stuff that's on your list, I'm pretty confident that it will still be more than you could ever imagine. Alrighty guys, I'm ending this video. I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about Alaska and my photography and videography and films and whatnot. Also, I have that video of my bucket list coming, so stay tuned for that one. I'm thinking maybe two weeks I'll be able to upload that video. Have a great day, and I'll see you in Alaska.